One of the questions that I'm asked the most about on my channel relates to this, my Canon IP8750 and how I get the most accurate colours. It seems that I'm not the only person that has struggled with Canon. Um, as long term viewers will know, I hate this printer. I really do. I wish that I had saved up and gone for another Epson, preferably an EcoTank. But here we are. We just have to get on with it. So I'm going to let you into a little secret. Because I hate this printer so much, I have been using my Epson 1500W uh, to print pretty much everything for the last year, especially since orders dropped off. However, it's 10 years old. It's now got to the point where it is just leaving lines throughout all artwork. And no matter how many head alignments and deep cleans that I do, it's not shifting. I think it's time to face the sad truth that it's dead, which means I'm gonna have to start using this one again. As I've got an order that's due out today, I thought it would be the perfect opportunity for you guys to come along with me and see exactly what settings I use to try and get the most accurate ink and colour profiles that I possibly can on this doomed printer. So let's jump in. First things first, I have got an absolute uh, rat's nest of cables back here. When you have five printers, it means that uh, you have always got a few that aren't plugged in because they're not in use. So first things first, I need to find the right plug. You might be able to see I've actually got labels on all of my plugs to make it a little bit easier. So laser printer, no. Canon, we have a winner. That wasn't so bad. So let's get her plugged in and turned on. When I'm not using my printers, I always try to make sure that everything is closed up. This stops dust getting into the mechanism and it is really important to help with the maintenance and upkeep of the machine. She says, even though you can clearly see there's a bit of dust on there. Next up, it's paper. I've done so many videos on what paper I use for my cards, and it's exactly the same for my prints, as long as they're A4. Anything bigger, I use a very bougie Marowit paper. Uh, there is a video in um, my YouTube channel. Just have a look, search for it, and you'll be able to see it. So this is from Paper Cuts. Um, I will try and drop a link down below. If not, you can find them on eBay. I have been using paper cuts since I started back in 2013. I used to use them all the time for my actual paper cuts. The irony is not lost on me because they had a great range of A3 160 GSM card, which is what predominantly the size and um, the thickness that my paper cuts were made in. So let's hop over to the computer now so you can see the settings that I need to use. In Affinity Designer, we're going to go up to Document Setup, and the first thing we're going to do is make sure that we're printing at 300 dpi. Then we're going to hop on over to the color profile, and as you can see, I have got so many color profiles here. I'm going to move mine on to the actual Canon uh, profile that you can see here, and then after that, I'm going to double check by going to print again and then obviously I'm going to select my correct printer you can see I've got quite a few there and for the IP8750 itself it's got a very basic print setup I'm going to use the settings that I always use for print which is um, here it's shortlisted as 5x7 card printing and then I just change it from A5 to A4 like this so as you can see the media type is uh, matte photo paper and I'm going to turn on borderless printing as well I'm hopping over to the main setup here just to make sure that the print quality is also on high and changing the manual color adjust intensity sorry back to auto as well everything else just stays the same so once that's all done I'm going to test print that <music> first glance it doesn't look too bad however if you have a look down the bottom which is where most of the issues start you can see that the yellow I don't even know what's going on there it's not even a cream color and the pink and the red 
and the orange are just merging into each other so to me that seems more like I've got an issue with ink quality so now I'm going to have to run an ink cycle to see whether or not my carts are full and perhaps give the heads a bit of a clean heading back over to print this time I'm going to go to printer setup and from this main page head over to maintenance I'm now going to perform a nozzle check so I can check whether or not everything is working as it should be and you can see here on the screen exactly how it should look if everything is displaying correctly so we can see from the nozzle check that the yellow has completely gone so although the machine is telling me that there is still ink in there i'm gonna have to change out the carts fingers crossed i've got a spare a holdover from my days of being so busy all the time uh, with orders means that i buy everything in bulk so luckily i've got another one let's pop this in and hope fingers crossed that it works I have a joke in my house that is not all of my printers can be working at the same time. There is not a single day that goes by where everybody is playing ball and everybody is behaving as they should be. Today it's the Canon. So when you lift up the cover for this it will automatically detect that you're trying to change the inks so we'll very helpfully pop the uh, ink carriage over to one side and looking at this is actually telling me that both the blue and the yellow are having issues so I am going to replace the yellow it's just a case of popping it out and yeah I mean you can tell it's pretty empty so I'm just going to put this back in I use compatibles because they are a fraction of the cost and the print quality is almost exactly the same I'm going to bring the glue out just to see how we're doing and to be honest I can see here that's pretty empty as well so I'm going to have a rummage in my big bag and try and find a blue okay more observant of you will have noticed this one's in a box whereas the other one wasn't that is because the ink readable <laughs> company that I now use decided to change their packaging Usually when you change to a new supplier, you have to buy a complete new set of inks, um, even if you haven't run out and install them all at the same time. Last time I got away with just changing out the ones that were empty because it seems their chip system's exactly the same. Hopefully that's going to happen now because otherwise it's just a huge expense of having to just bin these um, inks that have still got obviously ink left in them. So let's put this one in. And it seems to have taken them. Now we need to pop this back down and hopefully it should start charging the ink through. It's already decided it's ready to go. We've stopped flashing. So I'm going to just check the nozzles again in the hope that that's gonna work. If not, it may mean that it needs putting through again. Fingers crossed we're actually gonna get some uh, cyan and the yellow to come out now. Whilst that's doing that, I just wanted to chat to you about the difference that I personally find between the Canon printer and the Epson. Bearing in mind that obviously I've had both of them from you, so I did used to use the official inks, and even when they run out, both of them run on the compatibles rather than official. Um, in my opinion, although it's hard to see on camera, the Canon is just a bit more washed out, a bit more lighter. Uh, it hasn't got the same depth that the Epson has. Although the Epson printer itself is more finicky, um, I definitely had more problems maintaining it. The output kind of offset that, and for me, I was definitely happier. So lesson, very expensive lesson learned. I should have just carried on saving up and definitely got another Epson. In my opinion, the Canon is cheaper for a reason. Um, I know it's controversial because I know there's many people that absolutely love the Canon printer. I don't know if that's because perhaps they haven't had an Epson one or perhaps they had an Epson one where the print quality wasn't so great. I'm not sure. It's currently making a weird clicking sound. It doesn't usually do that. So I'm hoping that it's nothing too severe and that it's going to hurry up and do me a print check so I can actually get this order out because as usual it's putting me behind and I've got more client work to be getting on with. We have a winner everything looks okay now so now i'm going to run the machine through again in the hope that it's going to give me a better output this time for cheapness i am going to use exactly the same card um but just obviously the other way around because i don't want to keep wasting card this works out 
fairly expensive. I think it's like 75p a sheet. So uh, when you're having problems with your printer, you want to try and save money as much as possible. So I'm going to use exactly the same settings as I did before and hope that that's going to work. So it's finished and as you can see, it's definitely a lot better but in my personal opinion, it's still quite muddy. So now I'm going to show you the trick that I use to just boost up the colors. It all comes down to using, not the Canon <laughs> print profiles, but my Epson ones. Uh, usually I get quite a good result when I do this. So fingers crossed, let's see. I'm heading back over to document setup and over to color and you can see at the moment it's Adobe RGB 8 but I'm going to select my old SP Artisan 1500 archival mat and now I'm going to use the same print settings as before so heading back over to properties because it at the moment thinks I'm using the Epson printer so changing it back over to the Canon obviously and then I'm going to use the settings that I used before but before that I'm going to colored management just to make sure that the perform by app is selected that will make sure that Affinity Designer is in in charge of the color profile so back down to five by seven card printing turning on board loss borderless sorry and making it a4 again unfortunately that didn't work it used to work i've got no idea why it didn't so i'm gonna have to play around again as you can see on the um, using the Epson uh, profile, the black is just so patchy. And although I'm um, like some of the colors, it's just not great, especially when you compare it to the one when it was working. So I think I'm going to go for this one again. So I think I'm going to show you all one more time exactly the settings to use so I can get a crisp, fairly accurate colour print. So it matches what's on the screen fairly well. And then hopefully I'll have a nice print at the end of it. So I'm selecting Adobe RGB 1998 for colour this time and heading back into settings I'm just going to hop over to color management just to make sure that perform by printer is selected and then printer profile I am going to change to match the Adobe RGB 1998 So we've been on quite a journey today. Um, you have seen firsthand that it is still a lot of trial and error involved, even though I've had this printer for a couple of years. As I mentioned earlier, because I had to change my ink supplier, the ink squid that I was using went bust. They were hands down the best that I had found, but unfortunately I can't get their inks anymore. So I've switched to Incredible and their inks are still pretty good, but it has meant that my tried and tested methods of printing on these with the ICC profiles using the old Epson clearly don't work anymore. So it was definitely a good opportunity to jump in today and show you all um, how I'm now going to be doing it going forward. So let's just track the story of printing today and the different quality results that we've got. The first one was here. It's not bad with all the tweaks that I made and I'm sure we can all agree that most of the quality issues are due to just not having enough ink in the cartridges. We then went to here, um, a big improvement, but there's some weird mottling going on. I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up, but um, just on the background of the black. So that wasn't great. Then when I tried to do my old tried and tested moving to the Epson print profiles, we ended up with a shocker, which is not good at all. I thought it might have been the black. Again, it was running low, so I switched it out. No improvement whatsoever. But finally, we have got the finished item. I'm going to have to block out the top bit of this because it is actually a customer's order, so obviously it's confidential. But ta-da! Just look at the depth of quality there. I'm sure you will agree 
that is pretty close to the colours that we have on screen. I'm going to throw up a screen grab here for you so you can just see the different profile settings that will hopefully enable you to um, mimic these results at home. I hope you found this helpful. If you have, drop a little like down below. If you're not already subscribed, please do. I'm trying to become monetized uh, this year. I have reached most of the thresholds um, to be greenlit but there's still a few more which is watch hours so if you have enjoyed this or you think that somebody else may enjoy it or find it useful please share it if you're new here hi i post lots of videos like this helping you get to grips with printing um, and also running an etsy business thank you for joining me today and i'm going to see you all next time bye